Greetings, this is J.R. Dickey. Thanks for tuning in to our podcast. And by the way, don't forget our website, graceandtruth.net. I hope you're having a great day, but if not, hang with me. It's about to get better. You know, life is not simply living any more than love is simply a handshake. The heartbeat, a breath, standing upright are our signs of living, but not signs of life. To put it frankly, living in this world is simply a sham, a fraud, a deceit, because it isn't life. It's death delayed. It's merely existence, at times punctuated, with blips of revelry as distractions from the harsh reality of living in darkness. I know that's not inspiring, but if you're truly born again, life, eternal life, The magnificent quality of eternal life is in you. No longer are you simply existing. Now your body, your flesh, is not part of this life. For even when it's living, it's dead. Now don't be discouraged, defeated, or deceived when it does not cooperate with the life in you. You see, for as long as you are housed in it, God intends... For you to learn, to learn humility, to learn to trust him, truly trust him, to learn to listen, to learn faithfulness and obedience. Understand, you are not your flesh. Your flesh, despite its influence on your soul, is not you. When you're saved, you are one spirit with the Lord. See 1 Corinthians 6, 17. You don't work for that. It's just a gift. Just as Adam and Eve did not make Eden, God did, and placed them in it in order to have fellowship with them. Their original purpose, you see, was to know God. And that purpose, which they lost, was reestablished for us in Christ. John 17, 3 says, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So let's explore some more about this eternal life. In doing so, I'll borrow a bit from a couple of my fellow bloggers. What is eternal life. It is, first of all, uncreated, and as such, it is self-existing and ever-existing, unlimited, full of attributes and indestructible. Being eternal is one of God's qualities. He is the self-existing and ever-existing one. Some translators use the term everlasting life, but this does not capture the meaning, for everlasting merely refers to time without end. In actuality, with God, there is nothing called time. Eternity has to do with quality and nature of this life. This life is eternal because it is the life of the self-existing and ever-existing God. It is eternal because it is unlimited and indestructible. So now, what are the attributes of this life? We may be familiar with the commonly mentioned attributes of love, light, holiness, and righteousness. I would also bring to your attention that oneness is also a divine attribute. When you consider the oneness of the triune God... You must acknowledge how wonderful such a thing oneness is. On this earth, there is no such thing. When you are one with this person who is the eternal life, for John 14, 6, you are also one with his transcending power. When I'm one with Christ, I'm one with his love, light, holiness, righteousness, oneness, purity, singleness, harmoniousness, and I'm one with his power because 
These are all in him. These are all attributes of this one eternal person. So then what kind of power does God possess? Well, resurrection power, ascending power, enthroning power, the power that is infinite and thus overcomes all limitations. This power is another of his attributes. Now, thank you, Titus Chu, for some of this. Now, though I'm glad eternal life includes the grandeur of the new heaven and new earth, its focus really is elsewhere. Eternal life is a quality of life before quantity. It's knowing Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father in the most intimate relation imaginable. This is the essence, heartbeat, crux, core, magnificent splendor of eternal life. To know God is to begin the journey of fulfilling our deepest longings for connection, relationship, and intimacy. No mere humans can satisfy these insatiable cravings, not a spouse, children, friends, parents, or co-workers, only God. Only His Holy Spirit is powerful enough to bring us into such intimacy and to take us further up and further into the matchless riches of such grace. To know our Lord is to be fully known. In all of our brokenness, beauty, weakness, and neediness, equally, it's to be fully loved, way beyond our current grasp or capacity to imagine, as well as the immensely powerful hope that such a relationship with him could be ours. Thanks, Scotty Smith, for some of this. Is he your shepherd? You know, he said in John 10, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Now, do you understand his message? He said in 1 John 5, And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know Him who is true, and we are in Him who is true, in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Yes, eternal life is a quality of life. And that quality is entirely based upon your relationship with the way, the truth, and the life. So, I'll take quality over quantity any time, even when there is no more time. Love the Lord. Now, may the Lord grant you peace in the midst of any storm and faith to trust Him. Look for our next podcast, and may you realize more of His grace today.